On today's video, I have the amazing Danae with me, who runs Sherlock Watson on Tumblr and Instagram. And uh, recently, and the reason she's here is so we can talk about Sherlock, because recently Martin Freeman has been added to uh, the Civil War movie with the MCU, and Arthur Darville has been added to the DC's TV shows as a time traveler, which is very original. Uh, but that brings up just a lot of the BBC shows like Sherlock and Doctor Who that I don't get a chance to talk about a lot just because they're so... Uh, sparse within the year. Um, there's like a small window of them and then the rest of the year there's just nothing. So I rarely get to talk about them, but we're going to talk about it today. We're going to talk about Sherlock Season 4 and Danae's here because she's a lot more knowledgeable on it than I am. So I want to bring her here to help me talk about it. So uh, the first thing we have coming up is the Christmas special, which is... Uh, they I know they finished filming it, right? Yes. Uh, they finished filming it a few months ago, and the reason why we call it the Christmas special with the quotes is because we don't actually know when it's going to be aired. Um, they did finish filming. They're almost done with the music part of it, which is usually done right before it's released. Um, but it's really up to the BBC. They'll have it in their hands, and they can pretty much release it in, between now and Christmas. The original Sherlock did actually air in the summer. And then they switched it over to the beginning of the year um, for season two and then season three. So literally it's up in the air. It is definitely a special, um, even though it is a full episode, not like the Christmas special last year, which was a seven, like a seven minute little thing that they gave us. I enjoyed that. I did too. Um, but this is an actual episode. Um, we just don't know when it's coming. Okay. Well, I mean, knowing the BBC, they usually put out their big stuff in Christmas, right? Yes, so. the BBC usually has their big guns out for Christmas, and they were kind of surprised this last year because Sherlock did come out on New Year's, um, and it kind of blew them away because the fandom really blew up between the second and the third season, and they kind of weren't expecting it. I feel like if they would have, they would have put it mm -hmm. Christmas. Well, I mean, it's a show that like kind of came out of nowhere. Like, I started watching it after sure. season two was already done. I and I That's did as I well, um, and I got comments constantly of people who were. I just started watching the show, oh my goodness, and that was almost constant between when I started, you know, my Instagram, which wasn't too long after I started watching it, and up until when season three aired. So it really just kind of like exploded um, out of nowhere in between two and three, so. Uh, what we know about it so far is it is set in Victorian London. I guess Victorian London is the right term? Uh, yeah. Okay, Victorian London, so... You know, old time, the, like when Sherlock Holmes actually takes yeah. place, like like the Robert Downey Jr. movies and the books, yeah, things like that. So I, I'm definitely interested to see them in that setting, which is something I think would be really cool. It's, uh, people don't quite know what to like think of, because it's, I mean, it's definitely BBC Sherlock, but at the same time, it's not BBC Sherlock, because the whole point of BBC Sherlock, how they pitched it, was a modern day Sherlock Holmes. And for them to take it, and throw it back into like its original time period it's kind of confusing and exciting all at okay. once because you're like how are they supposed to put this into the timeline of bbc sherlock well so. seeing the cast like seeing the cast in the last three seasons and just reading the stories like like since i've watched the show whenever i read the stories mm -hmm. i easily picture benedict Cumberbatch as sherlock and martin freeman of like i easily picture that cast in that setting so when i heard it was victorian london i was really excited just because oh, that yeah. was Awesome, and I love like Victorian London setting, yeah. and I love Sherlock in that setting. That's why I like the Robert Downey Jr. movies so much. Mm -hmm. um, but originally, like originally, I thought it was just going to be like a one-off special, like this is them in Victorian London. But apparently, it's not. I, I'm not sure. Or it might um, not be. I know originally they were saying that it was going to solve the whole Moriarty thing, but there has been some things that like Moffat has said and Gatiss have said that have implied that it might just be its own special little bubble so which makes it more confusing yeah at the end of season three moriarty's pretty much back like yeah. we had the big screen of andrew scott saying did you miss me uh, so what are your thoughts on his return uh i don't know it could be so many different things all i know is that i was watching it live my sister and i with the rest of my family and we just started screaming our heads off because it was unexpected mm. um so there's there's so many different theories that people have. Um, is he really back? Is it a decoy? Who's doing the decoy? I mean, 
It could literally be anything between Moffat and Gatiss. Yeah. I, it, I really could be anything. Yeah. And pretty much any information they're going to give out, you have to take with a grain of salt because Absolutely. Moffat lies. Oh, yes. Um, so, I, honestly, I think it'll be a decoy. I don't think he's actually back just because I think that would be a little too much from Sherlock faking his death and him faking his death at the same time. Was... It might be, but he's such a fan favorite. He is. So... I hope it's a decoy. <laughs> it's not that I don't want Andrew Scott I, to no, come back. I feel the same way. Like, yeah. Andrew Scott in uh, the third episode of season three, and oh, not just that one scene, beautiful. was amazing. I it, thought was. it was. I thought it was fantastic. And, and Benedict was the same, too. Just both of them in that ele element, that whole Mind Palace mm -hmm. scene. It was it was gorgeous. And I know why it won the Emmy, because that just that one scene. It was just it was it brilliant. Was, it was fantastic. Um, so, hopefully... So it'll be explained when we watch it. I, I doubt we'll get any kind of solid explanation until then. I doubt it. Um, now, you do have a pretty big following on Instagram and Tumblr, and I know they had some topics that they might have wanted to, uh, to talk Yeah, about. probably. Will Anderson still have a beard? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so, too. That was a good beard, I, man. It was. I really liked Anderson this last season. Yeah. He was always the person you kind of, like, hated, but just this, like, last season, you were just like, Anderson. Well, he was kind of a dick, and then he was a re remorseful dick. Let's see. Someone asked, will Mary die or not? Probably not this episode. If it does happen. No. I think, honestly, I think, because I know in the books, doesn't she die in childbirth? She does. Or they don't never specify. She just kind of like is in one story, and then the next story, it's just implied that she had passed away. Okay. It never said how, um, okay. but it just, uh, she's dead. But Gatiss has said just because that something happens in the book doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen in the BBC version. Obviously. Um, but again, they lie. I think, honestly, I think her dying in childbirth is possible. If she's even pregnant. But she is pregnant. You, what, need, she, to, you need to look up some theories. There are some, I've, like, I've looked up theories and I disagree with a lot of them. <laughs> I do, yeah, you, and those, again, you have to take with a grain yeah. of salt, but a lot of people have, like, significant stuff to back up. I don't know. I don't claim to know. She could be. She could I think be. She, I Who think knows? she is actually pregnant. I don't think... She's been like walking yeah, up and up I, I kind of, in her, in her I kind of think she shirt. does, but so having a child in BBC Sherlock, uh, the child doesn't have to survive. <laughs> but I that's mean, like just depressing. I, I because don't know. Sherlock's never been depressing. Mm. All right. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, will Sherlock remember Greg's name? No. I think he does. I think he just likes messing with him. I honestly don't remember. His I name think most he does it. I just said it to you. Yeah, because you just said it. But usually he's just Lestrade. It's Greg Lestrade. Yeah, when I think of Greg, I think of Gregson from Elementary. <laughs> hey, Gregson's an awesome character. Elementary <laughs> is okay. All right, all right, all right. We won't go there. Uh, someone said the third Holmes brother. Probably dead. <sighs> The third sibling, which he never says brother, so technically it could be could a sister. Be a sister. Um, apparently that line was ad-libbed. It was not originally in the script. Mark Gatiss just kind of threw that in there. I thought it was funny. And they decided to run with it. So whether, I mean, I think that would be a good like plot to come up later maybe, but if they're going to actually take that and run with it, I have no I think it would actually be great if they just, like, leave it alone. Like, <laughs> if they just, just let thing. it simmer yeah. in the minds of everyone. Because Sherlock, Sherlock fans, once you have the little seed planted in our heads, we kind of just, like... Yeah, like, I'm good about, yeah. like, I'm big about fandoms. We're Sherlock fans, and I'm a Sherlock fan, but, like, hardcore Sherlock fans, y'all are insane. N not insane. Passionate. But passionate. That is the right word, because they're just... Uh, it's beautiful. That's all I can say about okay. it. I think this next one's one of my favorites. Will Mary die and John finally marry Sherlock? Really? I hope so. Really? Yes, I do but think Mary will die. Okay. Well, well. We won't we won't get into this. Okay. Because we, don't we have agree to. We don't have to. to disagree on John Locke. Did Sherlock tell the truth to Anderson on how he faked his death? This is a very good question. It is. It's it's actually one of the big ones that I've thought about um, from the first episode where it came back. What do you think? Um, it really could go either way. Um, I know I used to laugh, seen on Tumblr, when people said, I think 
they didn't know what they were going to do and just left the Sherlock fans to figure it out because there were some really ingenious ways mm -hmm. how the Sherlock fan figured that uh, Sherlock got off that roof alive. Um, whether that was the real one, they kind of left it hanging on purpose. I don't know if it is or if it isn't. Um, <laughs> Personally, like, I love the like the little cutaways they did of the different ways he might have survived. Yes. And I love those. I thought those were, were hysterical. They really were. the magician, yeah. and then there was the, yeah. the Moriarty lock thing. I, yeah, those, the, those. The, the face yeah. and the... But, honestly, I feel Sherlock... Because when Sherlock came back, he was, he was a much more personable Sherlock than he'd been. Yeah. A little bit. In a way, he was kind of more like... I don't want to say humble. Uh, yeah, humble. He was trying. Yeah, he was I don't. I think he kind of lost some of the personal he had because he was secluded. Yeah, you know, so he lost kind of that touch. But I think what happened. I mean, one of the first things we see. I mean, he was being tortured. You yeah. know, I, I that does something to someone, obviously, and the hints of PTSD that he may or may not have that were kind of sprinkled into yeah. uh, the empty hearse. Um, so he, I mean, he might have just been honest because Anderson believed in him. Yeah. Anderson believed in Sherlock Holmes. That's that's why I think he's honest. Well, one, because I think he was, you know, reaching out like, here's the olive branch to yeah. Anderson. But also, I think him telling him that is also who's going to believe him. Like, yeah. who's going to believe yeah. Anderson if he tells anyone? Of all people, Anderson. Yeah, because he's been know. going around with a million and one different theories. So yeah. I, I honestly think that he was telling the truth. Uh, yeah, why not? So that's how, I, I think that's how it happened. If something ha bad uh, happens to them, can poor John handle anymore? And the reason why I kind of I, this comment caught my attention was because there was something I read that either Gatiss or Moffat said that John was going to be put in a very dark place. I mean, we get, again we have to take everything with a grain of salt, but apparently they reduced their cast to tears trying to figure out. Um, telling them what was going to happen in season four. And apparently it might be very John-centric. John's been through a lot. I mean, yeah. poor John. Uh, finding out his life, why uh, his wife lied in the first place, I mean, kind of like devastated him. Like, his, just his face. Just Martin Freeman and his faces. He is an incredible actor. His faces. Yeah. But... Yeah, could John really take any more if something else happens? I think... I, I mean, I'm not saying it's going to be unscathed, obviously. But yeah. I think he could definitely... If, not that he could take more, but I think he could get through it. But I think it would also instigate him moving back into 221. Something has to get him back into yeah. 221. I mean... Which he actually just did something like that in elementary, but I'm not going to talk no, about that. Just, like elementary. No, no. Um, I, the whole point, though, is people wondering how he's going to get back into 221 b And that's why there's so much speculation around Mary and how thing, things happened in his last vow. Um, just things that were said, um, Mycroft in general, um, what he has to do with everything. Because, I mean, I have theories on that. A lot of people do. You can't tell me that Mycroft didn't know about Mary. Or didn't know who shot his little brother. He is the British yeah. government. And we know that he cares for Sherlock. He tells Sherlock that Carrie is not an advantage. But it's very, very, very clear that he cares for Sherlock. Honestly. So I'm there's got, I think personally, that there's a bigger picture that we're not seeing. I don't think there's, like, I don't think there's a bigger picture like you're talking about. I think, like, obviously Mycroft had to have known about Mary. Mm hmm But at the time, she was retired. She was, like, done with that when she married him, as far as we know. Mm hmm And I know you're going to disagree with me. I think she was telling the truth in that. Um, so, I mean, it was one of those things, like, why, why cause John that kind of, why go out of my way to cause John that kind Maybe, of Maybe, but still, after she attempted to kill Sherlock, 
you think Mycroft would have taken action, which is what I think part of his last vow is. But Sherlock was fine, and Sherlock dealt with it. So why would Mycroft go out of his way to deal with that? So Mycroft can do whatever the hell he wants. Exactly. So why would he want to go out of his way? Because that's his little brother. You can't tell me if something happened yeah, to one of your brothers. You can't tell me if something happened, and you had the power to do something about it, that you wouldn't do something about it. Unless I knew, like, if one of something happened to my brothers and my brothers had the power to do it themselves, I wouldn't get in their way. Sherlock. It's TV drama. <laughs> I mean, we will see. Yeah, we'll Another see. Another thing that we agree to disagree on. Yeah. And we'll yes. heavily debate until that's gonna, that's when gonna all be, is That's going to be the title of this video, We Agree to Disagree. <laughs> on most things. Pretty much. <laughs> okay, so um, I want to thank you for coming onto the video. It's fine. Um, you are uh, Sherlock Watson on Instagram and Tumblr. Yes. And that's how people can reach you and yep. follow you on the internet. Absolutely. Um, so if you have any questions for her, you can get her there. You can also get her in the comment section of this. And also remember, if you leave a comment on this video or any of the other videos in the month of May, you have a chance to win this Imperial Biker Scout Stormtrooper. Oh. So leave a comment. <laughs> okay. And you might win it. <laughs> And that'd be easier than me mailing it across the country. Kind of just like drop it off your house. Yeah. Um, so leave a comment. It can be for me. It can be for Danae. It can be first. Uh, just leave a comment on any of the videos in May, and you can win this biker scout. I'm much taller than you in this chair. Shut up. <laughs> okay. Follow me and Danae on all the internet. So there'll be links in the comment in the description. Uh, also check out my other videos. Check out Danae's posts and her following. And subscribe to my channel so we can geek out some more. Thanks for watching. One, so Captain America, Thor, Hulk.